I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. More than a decade ago, GM embarked on a small car program, and sitting here today, I cannot tell you why it took years for a safety defect to be announced in that program, but I can tell you we will find out. This is an extraordinary situation. It involves vehicles we no longer make, but it came to light on my watch, so it is my responsibility to resolve it. When we have answers, we will be fully transparent with you, with our regulators, and with our customers. While I can't turn back the clock, as soon as I learned about the problem, we acted without hesitation. We told the world we had a problem that needed to be fixed. We did so because whatever mistakes were made in the past, we will not shirk from our responsibilities now and in the future. Today's GM will do the right thing. This begins with my sincere apologies to everyone who's been affected by this recall, especially to the families and friends of those who lost lives or were injured. I am deeply sorry, and the men and women of General Motors are deeply sorry. The facts will be the facts. Once they are in, my leadership team and I will do what's necessary to assure this doesn't happen again. We will hold ourselves accountable. I have asked everyone on our team to keep stressing the system at GM and work with one thing in mind. Our customers and their safety are at the center of everything we do. Our customers who have been affected by this recall are getting our full and undivided attention. We've empowered our dealers to take extraordinary measures to treat each case specifically. If people do not want to drive a recalled vehicle before it is repaired, dealers can provide a loaner or a rental free of charge. To date, we've provided nearly 13,000 loaner vehicles. A supplier is manufacturing new replacement parts for the vehicles that are no longer in production. We've commissioned two lines and asked for a third, and those parts will start being delivered to dealers next week. These measures are only the first in making things right in rebuilding the trust with our customers. I would like this committee to know that all of our GM employees and I are determined to set a new standard. I'm encouraged to say that everyone at GM, up to and including our board of directors, supports this. As a second generation General Motors employee, I'm here as the CEO, but I'm also here representing the men and women who are part of today's GM. And I can tell you that they are dedicated to putting the highest quality and safest vehicles on the road. In addition, I announced yesterday that we have retained Kenneth Feinberg as a consultant to help us evaluate the situation and recommend the best path forward. I am sure this committee knows Mr. Feinberg is highly qualified and is very experienced in the handling of matters such as this, having led the compensation efforts involved in 9-11, the BP oil spill, and the Boston Marathon bombing. Mr. Feinberg brings expertise and objectivity to this effort. As I have said, I consider this to be an extraordinary event, and we are responding to it in an extraordinary way. As I see it, GM has both civic responsibilities and legal responsibilities, and we are thinking through exactly what those responsibilities are and how to balance them appropriately. Bringing Mr. Feinberg on is the first step. 